CNBC TV 18 Zetwork Smart Manufacturing Summit 2024. Hello and welcome to our special video cast, the CNBC TV 18 Zetwork Smart Manufacturing Summit 2024. Our big theme today is fueling MSMEs to realize India's manufacturing dreams and become a $30 trillion developed economy by 2047. India's MSMEs have a big role to play. They contribute over 30% to the GDP, 45% to exports. They're poised to play an even bigger role in domestic and global markets. But in order to become more competitive and become part of a more resilient supply chain, MSMEs uh, need improved access to finance, simpler terms for securing loans, easier customs procedures, and removal of tariff barriers as well. Small businesses are emerging as the biggest drivers for unsecured loans uh, as well, with a 73% year-on-year growth in demand for such credit for uh, MSMEs in the second quarter. So how can we empower MSMEs further? To discuss this further, I'm joined by four esteemed guests today in our studio. Uh, number one, Pulkit Bhandari, CFO of Zetwork. He's with us here in the studio. Samir Patil, CBO of Bombay Stock Exchange. KV Srinivasan, ED and CEO, Perfectus Capital. And Rajendra Sinha, MSME Financing Guru, Professor and Chairperson for Center of Excellence and Banking. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us here in our studio. Let me begin with you, Pulkit, by asking you about Zetwork. And it's a company which, which really plays a critical role in having a resilient <coughs> supply chain for businesses. How important are MSMEs to your business, first of all? MSMEs for, for, for our kind of business is like the backbone of what we are doing, right? So essentially, we are basically using the infrastructure that has been created by MSMEs and providing that support to basically the end customer, right? We bring them together. Uh, wherein we basically help them utilize their facilities uh, at the same time basically adhere to the customer requirements that they are looking out for. Yeah. In the shortest period of time? In the shortest period of time, yeah. Right. So what is the, the biggest challenge that you often encounter? So uh, I, I think it's uh, about how, how do you get those MSMEs to, to adhere to those quality standards uh, which basically the end customer is wanting for. How do you manage that entire supply chain very closely working with them how do you basically bring technology to their doorsteps and kind of get it uh, get it implemented uh, at the same time basically adhere to those timelines that is that is required yeah right. help them on help them on every aspect from from procuring to basically manufacturing to basically supplying yeah right so there is a, a demand for quality there is a demand for standards all across the board but uh, mr sinha if i were to ask you uh, from your experience do we need to address issues of MSMEs first? Or first we address how we need to become uh, the factory of the world? We have an aspiration to manufacture, be a big global supplier. So first, do you think we need to work on how we, became, we can become a better manufacturer for the world, first of all? Well, uh, MSMEs are backbone or spine of Indian economy. And the figures you gave, uh, they, they uh, support it. Now, they are the suppliers to the big businesses also. So their outputs are input raw materials for the big industries. Mm. So obviously, when we want to trigger our economic growth, MSME's triggering becomes very essential and pertinent. And for that purpose, whatever the requirements are there for them, they are not only the finance aspects, but yes, most of the MSMEs in India, out of 6.33 crores, uh, 63 millions, they are micro enterprises. That means their turnover is less than five up crores. Mm. Investment in plant and machinery is less than one crore. Mm. So they require a lot of uh, hand holding. Most of them have got one man show. Mm. Helping them out, how easy access to financing can be them and also how the improvement in infrastructure, supply chain aspects are there. So the marketing becomes easier for them. So yes, uh, giving adequate support, timely support for MSME certainly is going to help realize our big dream. Mm. Mr. Srinivasan, coming to you, uh, if we were to ask you about the credit gap in the MSME sector, what would it be like? And uh, is, the credit gap, the biggest issue facing MSMEs as well? Uh, 
See, the credit gap is virtually immeasurable. You have enough and more uh, estimates of what it could be. To put it in one word, it's astronomical. So therefore, the demand gap is fantastic. I think the key factor is that uh, there is a certain amount of addressable gap that we can very well do in the immediate future, which is, uh, uh, you know, the people who are actually doing well, their own requirements being not fulfilled to the uh, proper extent. Now, we've had so many years of banking development in India, but then uh, the last mile connectivity is something that which has not been really achieved in the proper manner. Mm. Uh, couple of problems that are that have been faced in in achieving that is the fact that you know msmes tend to be a lot more inward looking mm. in terms of their own business their own funding and all of that they do not want to open up their books to the mm. external world etc mm. so there is a certain amount of aversion to credit itself which is there inbuilt into our human <coughs> psyche in the indian psyche so that is changing slowly mm. second factor is greater degree of formalization of our indian economy post demonetization post gst that has really triggered a huge amount of uh, uh, openness and transparency in the way MSMEs report their uh, figures. Uh, so, therefore, the demand gap appears to be really much more than what it, uh, you know, earlier used to be uh, disclosed. So, that is one very important factor. The second factor is that if India has to grow in the in the proportion that we really wanted it to grow, MSMEs have to grow double. Mm. Otherwise, we are not going to get there. So, therefore, greater degree of funding coming in not only from banks, but from NBFCs, from various other providers becomes very critical for us. And that needs to, in fact, become a vibrant ecosystem and on its own. Mr. Parthad, when we speak about all the issues that MSMEs are facing, and there is absolutely no doubt, and there are hundreds of articles written about the importance of MSMEs, the RBI is looking at it, several banks are uh, looking at how to increase liquidity flows into MSMEs, how to handhold them better. How do you think exchanges can handhold MSMEs, somehow guide them into uh, uh, predicting the financial situation better, seeing how the markets are set to evolve over the next uh, five to ten years. It's very difficult to make stock market predictions, but as uh, as a stock exchange, how can you handhold MSMEs? In fact, uh, the entire journey started uh, way back uh, in 2012, on 13th of March 2012, when the BSE started its SME segment. Forget listing an SME. It was difficult to find out uh, finding out a merchant banker as well. Mm. So from those days till day today, in fact today in the morning I was there for a listing. We listed 463rd SME company on the SME platform today. It's been a very very long uh, way from there. And what we have seen is. Uh, uh, earlier, the, the SME company used to find difficult to attract investors no, to uh, to come and invest in the company. But the scenario today has changed. We have having we we are seeing QIBs, HNIs, ultra HNIs uh, coming and investing in the I, SME IPOs. So what has gained is once you come and list on the exchange, what uh, what gets uh, what it gets to the SME is visibility, governance. And when you have uh, visibility and uh, government and corporate governance to the extreme where because you are regulated then by the exchange and the uh, regulators, you attract finances. Mm -hmm. Your credit, your, re, uh, your need or requirement for credit increases. Banks look at you very, very, very seriously because one, now we are into serious business. You can uh, raise finance, you can expand your growth and sky is the limit then. If I were to ask you, listing is one thing. Going forward from there, when it comes to your transparency, when it comes to your corporate governance standards, what is the road that MSMEs need to take in order to grow further from then on, in order to keep uh, having the investor confidence? Very good question, Parishit. In fact, I would like to mention, out of the 463 companies, 180 companies odd have already migrated to, to the main board. What does that mean? They've expanded, they expanded the horizon, moved on to the next level. So this it shows this itself shows the kind of response. If there is a good company, if they're doing well, the manufacturing unit is doing well, they're expanding, there is there is a vision for uh, expansion and innovation, there are takers for it. Uh, Pulkit, when we look at uh, the Indian manufacturing industry and everyone speaks about the China plus one strategy, everyone says that the opportunity is now for India, but at the same time, this. Uh, China plus one window will not remain there forever. It's there for three to four years. How do you think, Pulkit, our MSMEs can seize this opportunity better? And how can we uh, come in as, as startups, as regulators, as governments to encourage them better? So China plus one, I think uh, one of the theses that we have uh, at Zetwork is that this is, uh, this is a, 
phenomena which is once in a lifetime phenomena which which we are seeing um, uh, where the entire global uh, supply chain is getting reevaluated uh, is shifting right there is a concepts of uh, uh, onshoring near shoring uh, uh, which are basically or friendly shoring which is which is what is happening uh, as a result what will what will happen is uh, there is a massive shift that will happen towards india now if india were to capture this big opportunity the only way it can basically do it is by capitalizing on the backbone which is msmes uh without msme support this uh, this uh, endeavor that basically indian government is taking taking up is not possible uh, and similarly for the msmes to basically give that kind of output uh, banking support and uh, another supports are required uh, now when you look at the overall framework of china plus 1 we have all the building blocks in place right whether it's uh, people uh, india has uh, 19% of working population of the world right uh, whether it's financial resources look at the capital markets look at the debt markets both have basically evolved and reshaped itself mm-hmm. so that that support is out there for us when you look at uh, when you look at political capital i think that the the kind of steps that the government has taken are are uh, again phenomenal uh, starting from gst to to basically the entire in- investment that which is happening in the in the logistic uh, side of it right which is going to make us far more mobile than what we were before so all those building blocks are in place uh, and msmes are going to basically capitalize on this uh, and and thankfully because of that i think the the bigger opportunity that india for world uh, and india for india is going to basically play out beautifully rajendra sinha if i were to come to you securing credit lines and having a stable credit line is of course very important as this panel has been discussing but what are some of the other regulatory issues that uh, msmes face in the country something that we could do in terms of tariff and non tariff barriers ease of doing business yeah, yeah that's true uh, uh, in fact as regards to financing you uh, you mentioned that yes Uh, there have been very good initiatives and in a very difficult time of covid uh, we came forward with the line of credit uh, collateral free line of credit and that helped uh, uh, msmes in a big way uh, additional credit they were provided mm. over and above whatever was the existing uh, as of that particular date and that continued uh, waving of uh, you know their repayments period a couple of times by reserve bank of india an extraordinary kind of a gesture which was there mm-hmm. so far earlier the focus used to be collateral based kind of security based guarantee based kind of thought process but uh, of late uh, la- a couple of years in this 21st century we have seen that that is the extreme way for you know Uh, those kind of assets what's more important is actually the cash flow fund flow for msmes and business and that should be the basis for the uh, assessing the requirements and that way 2019 uk sinha experts committee on msmes came forward that yes banks should now come forward with the kind of products which are suitable for msmes mm. and they should capture the cash flows and banks have started working good thing i have come across that uh, various kind of applications which are place qr code is there all those things capturing takes place because the money goes in the account yeah. and uh, as was mentioned uh, by my colleague that uh, various initiatives which have taken place 2016 onwards mm. that has brought uh, on digital f- platform right. for get taking the money mm. so that's a very good thing because that way the balance sheets and all becomes very good but okay. yes apart from that yes the barriers of uh, you know the taxation and all those policy structures yes we need to look into more favorable side of msmes mm. which will be a booster for them yeah, mr shrinivasan do you feel that it's now for fueling the next phase of our growth it's important to encourage certain champion sectors where msmes can flourish not just in the domestic and global markets or uh, we need a broad brush uh, approach for the msme sector as a whole see india has got certain core competency in certain specific industries mm-hmm. pharma auto component <coughs> etc etc and there are so many of them which are now developing defense for instance electronics these are things which are the 
being promoted or pushed by the government through their uh, PLI scheme and stuff like that. So where today, uh, I mean, there is a huge scope for further development of the SME uh, ecosystem around the main manufacturers, right? And this is something which I see as an extremely for, you know, forward-looking development that's really happening. So you may not be uh, an expert in everything, but you are an expert in some key industries and that in itself can fuel your growth uh, forward as an economy. This is number one. Number two, I think there is a very important factor which has been recognized where I think there is further uh, need to uh, work on is skill development, mm. right? Uh, two things I've heard uh, MSMEs tell me over the period of times, I would have interacted with probably some three, four thousand such MSMEs. They say, we don't get the right amount of money in the right time, that's one. But very importantly, nobody tells us what to do with the money. Mm. So while I get the money, mm. I may not be able to utilize it in the right manner and the money gets frittered away, which leads to credit problems, right? Mm -hmm. So I think management uh, development, skill development is as important as just providing money because mm. you're not really teaching him to, 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 to what to do with the money. You're also providing him the money so that everything is in the right direction. I think that's very critical. So, uh, so identification of certain specific uh, sectors, development of the MSME ecosystem in that through various incentive schemes and uh, you know probably pushing the banks and NBFCs to lend in the right manner. Third, as he rightly pointed out, cash flow based lending. Fourth, which is now becoming very important with GST coming in, GST based lending. So you're mm -hmm. able to actually take care of the seasonality factors which many of our industries really go through and not just go with the averages kind of an approach which has been traditionally followed for uh, providing working capital funding, etc. So these are some of the things that can actually do to help the MSMEs to kind of grow out of their current state. Mm. And very importantly, as I see the ecosystem around, uh, initially I did mention to you that in SMEs are more inward looking, but the next generation which is now coming and taking over from their parents mm -hmm. is far more outward going. They are more ambitious, more educated, more well governed from an internal perspective. And that I see as a huge uh, uh, push from, uh, from, from the internal side. Uh, towards the growth of the MSMEs. Right, uh, very important what you said about uh, managing the resources that you have. Some of these MSMEs which uh, support companies like Maruti Suzuki, the automobile sector for that matter, the capital goods sector for that matter, these are not small companies. They, they have strong capital, uh, they have uh, proper working conditions for employees, uh, they have strong order books as well. But when it comes to helping them manage their workforce, training their workforce, and managing their resources better for the future. Uh, who can actually do that hand-holding? Can it be academic institutions? Can it be a industry, regulator, partnership? Uh, what is the way forward on that, Mr. Patel? First, though, I would absolutely, uh, I mean, second the thought what Srinivasan said about how you get the money then what do you do with it mm. okay uh, once you uh, now what has the cab of the stock markets or the capital markets or bse provided as a platform is in a very short span of time you know uh, you get visibility to the largest extent of the length and breadth of the country uh, there are regulations wherein uh, when you get listed mm. you have to have, uh, earlier an SME would, would be only a one man running the show or something as a sort. So if you want to get listed, you need to have professionals, you need to have an independent director, so on and so forth. So what you get is fresh thinking. Mm -hmm. The thought process increases. Then you realize when professionals come into the act, then you realize you get funds. How do you make use of the fund in a better way to not only for expansion, but innovation as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, COVID was a very, very important, uh, I mean, when I say it was an event, though, uh, which um, uh, uh, pushed everyone to the core. And one of the most important things that, that happened uh, to the stock markets was, I'll give you some numbers. Pre-COVID, the investor base on the uh, BAC was Indian capital markets of 5 crores. Today, at this point of time, we have 14 crore investors and BS is in existence uh, for 149 years now. So you can understand how technology has played a very, very uh, vital role. It's been a key enabler. Mm. So there are takers now. If you have the right kind of a mix of products, uh, you, ca you can raise funds, mm. you can market your company to the other uh, investor across uh, the India, and also the dream of having an Atma Nirbhar Bharat or Make in India or one of the most important themes which I'm uh, hearing nowadays is vocal for local mm. will increase and take off from it. Right. Uh, from, a, from a supply chain perspective uh, and, and your experience as a CFO, Pulkit, uh, what do you think are some, if I were to ask you three mantras for MSMEs 
to help India achieving a pole position in manufacturing, what would those be? So I think um, uh, predominantly their ability to adopt uh, technology mm -hmm. is going to be very critical. Uh, reason being that uh, in order to achieve that scale and size, uh, to do it without technology is, is difficult. <clears throat> the second will be uh, ability to uh, adhere to basically various compliances, mm -hmm. right, which are out there, uh, whether it's from a banking perspective, whether it's from a, from a uh, say GST perspective, mm -hmm. uh, that adherence has to happen very quickly. I think those are, uh, I would say, two critical aspects that they should basically look out for. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, uh, I think uh, uh, when it comes to growth, mm. uh, the biggest basically challenge there is working capital. Uh, I think most MSMEs are very well run because they are they're run by an entrepreneur who's doing it day in, day out, mm. uh, very cognizant of mm. cash flows. Mm. But the moment uh, that entrepreneur starts thinking about growth, that's when the mismatch happens. Mm. I think that element is something that they need to, uh, I would say, evaluate very carefully. Mm. And that's where large corporations, uh, large companies, large platforms and companies like Zetwork, mm. uh, the banking ecosystem, uh, all have to come together and basically help them uh, help them achieve that goal. So I think that becomes super, super critical. Right. Uh, two important themes we should quickly discuss. One, about the opportunity that comes with energy transition. And the number two is bridging the gender cap at the topmost level. I was reading some statistics which showed that more than 70% of MSMEs are led by men. Uh, it's a small percentage, about 15 to 20 percent, which would be led by women. Uh, do you think we need to encourage more women entrepreneurs? There is a lot of talk of having more women on the board, more women CEOs for having more balanced decision making. Mr. Patel, do you think uh, that is something we must inculcate uh, in the MSMEs as well? Of course, I'm a strong believer in that. And you should have more and more women empowered to, be, uh, to run the businesses. But uh, just to give a note to it, it is very heartening to see whenever we have a listing on uh, the BSC for SME, mm. along with the uh, entrepreneur, the male, even the wife accompanies for the bell ringing. Mm. So this is very, very uh, heartening to know. And yes, I second, and definitely second the thought that they should be, women should be empowered for us. Right. Uh, so we've completely run out of time. But if we can just do uh, one, one quick take from all our panelists on one key idea they would leave our viewers with when it comes to fueling MSME growth, what would that be? And uh, let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Sinha. I would suggest that, that there has to be a strong linkage in industries and academia, and our institution has taken initiative with SIDBI, yeah. uh, and also now taking with the Bangalore Chamber of Industry and Commerce for yeah. SMEs, yeah. for making a skill development for their employees and also promoters. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan. Take the right kind of money, manage it well, and return the money to who to whoever you bought it from. Okay, uh, Mr. Fatil. To gain visibility, you need to come forward and list yourself on the uh, stock markets or stock exchanges so that you get visibility. You can use the capital raised to uh, for uh, expanding and uh, innovation of your products. And also, I am a firm believer of Nari Shakti. Nari Shakti. Okay. Uh, Pulkit, final word. Yeah. So I think all stakeholders, starting from customers to to suppliers to platforms to banks to NBFCs. Uh, to government, uh, I think everyone needs to come together uh, and MSMEs also need to tap into each of these uh, stakeholders mm. uh, in order to basically get India where uh, we are all kind of gunning it for, right? So I think that's very, very, very critical. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on this program. It's been truly a masterclass for uh, MSMEs and uh, their promoters who would be watching us right now. Thank you very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. CNBC TV 18 Z Work Smart Manufacturing Summit 2024.